Hey guys, welcome back to Listography. So this is it, this is the top 20. Uh, if you need a little refresher on what you've missed so far, you can look down in the description box for the uh, full list, or you can click the links at the end of this video to watch some of the other uh, parts in this series. Uh, so these are the top 20. Uh, these are the albums that I love the most in 2018. At number 20, the album is Go To School by The Lemon Twigs. Uh, this album is probably a bit too long. The concept about a monkey going to school is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, the songwriting is a little hit or miss, and the recording quality is slightly subpar. And yet, for all of its shortcomings, uh, this album feels vital. Uh, the energy and the attitude of this band and their grasping for something that's just a bit beyond their reach is actually why they succeed uh, in making what so few bands can, and that is an exciting rock and roll record. Uh, you get a sense while listening to Go to School uh, that the whole thing could come off the rails at any second, and yet it never does. In fact, uh, just when you uh, seem sure that it's going to, that's when they hit you with their best chorus or their prettiest melody. Uh, it's far from a perfect record and probably not as good as their debut record, uh, but records like this deserve to be celebrated uh, because in times like these, when the top of the charts uh, looks the way it does, uh, it's bands like the Lemon Twigs that are going to keep rock and roll alive. At number 19, the album Where We Were Together by the band Say Sue Me. Uh, the South Korean four-piece whose devotion to 90s indie guitar rock uh, results in some of the year's most gloriously fuzzed out guitar riffs. Uh, paired with Sumi Choi's soft vocal delivery, everything kind of blurs together into a dreamlike nostalgic haze. At number 18, the album is Little Dark Age by MGMT. Uh, perhaps the biggest surprise of 2018 uh, was just how good the new MGMT album is. Uh, the sounds on this record are lush and interesting, the songwriting is memorable, and the hooks are darn catchy. In fact, Little Dark Age, even though it lacks the huge hits, uh, might be a better overall record, front to back, uh, than their uh, landmark Oracular Spectacular. At number 17, the album is Lionheart by H.C. McIntyre. Uh, the former Mount Moriah frontwoman's debut solo album Lionheart uh, was one of the best country albums of 2018, great songs, a great traditional Nashville sound, and a powerhouse voice, and that's really all you need. At number 16, the album is Passwords by Dawes. Um, Dawes returned from We're All Gonna Die, an album that was disappointing for me. Uh, it was an album that I think a lot of uh, their fans had mixed feelings about. Uh, many people took issue uh, with the more experimental production. Uh, which was uh, provided by Blake Mills. I actually enjoyed the sound of the record. Uh, for me, the issue was more with the songwriting and specifically the choruses. But anyways, uh, they returned this year with Passwords, an album that dials back the adventurous spirit of We're All Gonna Die uh, for a more agreeable, modern sounding production. Uh, the sequencing of the record is a little strange. Uh, the only song I don't like that much is the opener uh, with its sort of plodding riff, and they follow that up with two slow songs. So by that point, they've kind of killed the momentum of the album. Um, but though I have a lot of sort of nitpicky complaints about this record, that just goes to show uh, how great of a songwriter Taylor Goldsmith is and uh, how great of a player every member of the band is. You know, even a slightly disappointing Dawes album is still better than most things. And even with shortcomings, uh, their albums can stand on the strength of their songs and their musicianship. At number 15, the album is The Art of Pretending to Swim by Villagers. Uh, this was an album that I listened to late in the year as I was trying to wrap up the making of this list and it really took me by surprise. What could have ended up being a really unremarkable singer-songwriter record is brought to life by some really creative and interesting arrangement and production choices. Uh, there are some great uh, funky bass lines on this record as well. At number 14, the album uh, The Mighty Thread by Michael Now. Michael Now was in a group called Cotton Jones, and this is his third solo album. 
Although I must confess that this is my introduction to his music. Uh, I love the songwriting and the simple conversational vocal delivery and the production on here. Just a really solid record and I'm excited to dig more into his back catalog. At number 13, the album is Full Circle Nightmare by Kyle Kraft. Uh, Kyle Kraft's debut was one of my favorite albums of 2016. Uh, and if I think about it, it's probably one of my favorite albums of the last decade. Uh, so the bar was set very high for this follow-up. And while it probably doesn't quite match Dolls of Highland, uh, this is a very solid sophomore set. Uh, his songwriting recalls Dylan at times, while his band can jump from Bowie, Glam, uh, to Big Pink era the band at a moment's notice. Uh, however, none of that uh, can outshine his amazing, powerful voice. At number 12, the album is Western Movies by Traveler. Uh, this is a super group of sorts consisting of Johnny Fritz, Robert Ellis, and Corey Chisel, uh, and they deliver a surprisingly strong debut effort uh, that leaves you hoping that this won't be the lone entry in their discography. Uh, it's a really strong batch of songs, even if a few songs are called from their own solo careers. And the three trading verses throughout the album really conveys the joy they must have had making the record. At number 11, the album is Nerveless by Daniel Romano, the third record of his uh, to make the list from this year. Uh, this is my favorite of the three. Um, Nerveless is probably the closest uh, to last year's album Modern Pressure, which was my favorite album of 2017. Uh, there's an immediacy to songs like Anyone's Arms and the title track. And though none of his albums this year quite achieved the greatness of Modern Pressure, cumulatively, uh, they make a pretty strong case for him being uh, the greatest songwriter in the game right now. Okay, so this is it. Now we're into the top 10. At number 10, the album Abyss Kiss by Adrian Lenker. Uh, this is just a hauntingly be beautiful solo record from the Big Thief frontwoman. Uh, while these songs don't necessarily have the uh, sonic impact uh, that she can have with her band. They are no less powerful. Uh, even the record's quietest moments uh, really demand the listener's attention. At number nine, the album Mr. Jukebox by Joshua Headley, uh, the longtime fiddle player for the likes of Johnny Fritz. Uh, jo uh, Josh Headley strikes out on his own uh, and signs with Jack White's Third Man Records for his debut record. Uh, it's full of simple, great country songs uh, that are played and sung impeccably well. Although the album has a very ornate sound with lush layers of backing vocals and strings, uh, it doesn't fuss about much. Uh, the songs are very concise, uh, with more than half of the album's tracks under three minutes. They get in, tell the story they mean to tell, and get out. At number eight, it's God's Favorite Customer by Father John Misty. Back-to-back -back years for Father John Misty coming in at number eight on my list. Uh, sonically, this album is very similar to its predecessor, although I think some of Jonathan Rado's production touches here uh, give the album a slight edge. Uh, but this album is a bit more inviting than the wordy and sometimes difficult Pure Comedy. And while somehow Pure Comedy still feels like the better album, uh, God's Favorite Customer still contains all the hallmarks of a Father John Misty record, the wit, the sarcasm, and the melodramatic. At number seven, it's A New Day Tonight by Michael Ralt. Uh, this is my favorite sounding record of the year. Uh, I'd recommend this record to fans of Dark Side of the Moon, Pet Sounds, Sgt. Pepper, or any album that is metif meticulously crafted in the studio uh, with every sound and tone stressed over like a life or death situation. Uh, everything sounds vintage and warm and the tunes here are great as well. At number six, the album You Forever by Sam Evian. Uh, Sam Evian is now carrying the torch once held by acts like Big Star, Matthew Sweet, and Teenage Fan Club. Uh, he's taking power pop, giving it a 21st century indie makeover. Uh, the tunes are sweet and the production is fantastic, uh, but the real star of the show for me is the vocals. Sweet high falsettos and great harmonies. Uh, just a great record all overall and someone I can't wait to hear more from, uh, seeing that he's only two records into his career. All right, top five. Uh, number five, Fox Warren's self-titled album. Um, my favorite album of 2016 was Andy Schaff's The Party. Uh, Fox Warren is a band fronted by Schaff, and in some ways, uh, this feels like a follow-up album to The Party. Uh, with Andy's distinct voice front and center, it's uh, 
hard not to sound a bit like one of his solo albums, uh, but with a band backing him, uh, the album has a bit more variety. At times they can provide, you know, a muscular backbone to the songs, propelling them forward. And at other times they can lend the songs sort of a spacey ambience. Uh, whether or not it's intended to be considered a proper follow-up to the party, uh, Fox Warren is certainly up to the task with quality songs and uh, great fleshed out full band arrangements. At number four, the album Loner by Caroline Rose. Although this is her third album, it feels like a debut. Uh, it's a complete 180 from her first two Rootsy songwriter albums. Here she embraces synth pop, surf rock, and jagged art rock. Uh, it's as if the creative floodgates have opened for her and ideas are just pouring out. Uh, the album is lyrically varied as well, uh, but everything is done with a wink and a smile, a very funny, humorous record. Uh, and this is, you know, her figuring out how to have fun and still have something valid to say. At number three, the album is The Horizon Just Laughed by Damien Gerardo. Uh, it's kind of incredible that 21 years after his debut, uh, Damien just keeps getting better and better with every release. Uh, this is a gorgeous record with very simple arrangements and his voice is fantastic and haunting throughout. At number two, the album is Historian by Lucy Dacus. Uh, Lucy Dacus's debut album, No Burden, in 2016, made her one of the most exciting and promising young artists to appear that year. Uh, but even after that, no one could have predicted the monumental leap forward that she would take with her next album. The songwriting is fantastic. The engineering and mixing are incredible. Uh, the production and arranging are stellar as well. Uh, the songs unfold slowly uh, and take surprising turns as new instruments and textures are introduced. Uh, it really just takes you on a journey and really a great record in every, every possible way. And at number one, uh, the album Hollow Ground by Cutworms. Uh, years down the line from now, I may look back at 2018 and remember Lucy Dacus's Historian as the best album of the year. I'd say there's about a 50-50 chance of that happening. I would say that the Lucy Dacus record is probably the more masterful of the two records, uh, but this list is sort of meant to be a reflection of, of what I was really into during this year, and there is no denying at all that I have really been digging this Cutworms record all year long. I have not been able to stop listening to it. It's so catchy, so infectious. Uh, the songs feel effortless and I really just uh, love it. Um, so while it may not, you know, feel quite as, a, as an important of a record as the Lucy Dacus record, um, it's just a undeniably fun record. So there you have it, guys. That is my top 100 albums, all 100 of them. Um, please give a like if you like. Um, Subscribe if you have not yet, uh, hit the bell so you get notifications, and let me know what your favorite albums of the year were. Uh, I can't wait to see your lists, uh, and thank you for watching. Uh, we will be, be back in early January uh, with another listography. Thanks for watching.